horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty hi Silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations, and nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. There's trouble on the trail ahead. I'm Silver. Power. Night hugged the valley and cast grotesque shadows behind the sagebrush. Deep in the hollow, the tiny cluster of lights that was Sage City lay like a jewel in a black palm. Then far in the distance, along a wagon trail worn by countless wheels, a stagecoach approached. Concealed by a boulder, two men watched the faint flicker of its lanterns. One was the sheriff. The other was Todd Lang, gunman and thief. They'll drive the stage fast down grade, Sheriff. They'll slow up when they reach the pass. That where you arrange the stick up? Yeah. Knife is hiding in that brush by the bend. When they break the stage for the curve... He'll hit them off with the sure guns. That's the cue for your deputy, Vic Colton, to ride to the rescue, huh? Yeah, Vic knows the stage is freight and silver this trip. <laughs> and I made sure he got wind of a plan to waylay it at the pass. But Knife won't have a chance. Vic's the fastest man with a six-gun in the county. That's why I hired the breed to come here. Too many of the gang are lying on Boot Hill from trying to outshoot Vic. <laughs> this time, it'll be Vic's turn. They don't savvy. Well, Knife is a killer, his handle is a tip of. You mean? <laughs> After the breed surrenders his hardware, Vic will relax. Then Knife will slip a blade from his sleeve and let him have it. Yeah. Sure. A breed can pin the ace of spades with that blade at 20 feet. <laughs> Poor Vic. Yeah. Then Knife will vamoose, and Vic will be reported killed while performing his duty. And Sage <laughs> said he'll have a new deputy, huh, Sheriff? He'll get the job. Don't worry, Todd. <laughs> Yeah, it was a mistake to give Vic the badge in the first place. He was so handy with a gun, I figured him for an outlaw. How'd I know I'd start cleaning town? Well, Vic aimed to prove you got a share of the loot for leaving the gang alone. Yes, it coyote. He's made things mighty uncomfortable for both me and the boys. And pretty near the whole town's behind him. Well, we won't have to worry after the night. Uh, what if Vic beats the breed to the kill? <laughs> I've taken care of that, too. Look, stage is at the pass. Yeah. And there's knife right in the medium. Out there! Halt! Or I shoot! Oh, yeah! Oh, halt there! Halt there! Oh, oh, oh! Gracias, señores. 
Now, if you please. The silver. Prato. Better give it to him, guard. Them trigger fingers look kind of nervous. You're covered. Get that silver where it is. Sabristo. Big call. Don't shoot. Throw down those guns. You have the drop on me, senor. I will do what you say. And a gun shy when the odds are even, aren't you, Reed? Ah, senor. But they are not even. You see, I have heard of your speed with a pistol. Is that so? Now you see how quick I am at jailing stage thieves. These handcuffs will look mighty handsome on you. Keep your hands up. See, si, senor. But first... <laughs> a knife! No, you don't! Six alive? Big shot the breed. Yeah, but the breed knife, big shoulder. Oh, 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 oh. Right up front. Look right out about this. You men keep that stage right where it is. Don't move on. The sheriff has questions about the shots. Sheriff, it is your deputy that fired. Oh, you are Vic. What's the matter with you? That breed tried to stick up the stage. Got the drop on him, but he threw a knife and got my shoulder. I shot him. Well, I'm glad you're here. Kind of, kind of weak. How's the breed, Todd? Uh, he's done for. <coughs> All right, Todd. Put handcuffs on Vic. Right. Handcuffs on me? Yeah, yours too thin, Vic. Even if you are a deputy, you can't rob the stage and murder the passengers. Are you loco? I suspected you had an eye on that, Sylvia. That's why me and Todd was hanging around this trail. Sheriff, listen to me. I heard there was a scheme to rob the stage. I came here to prevent it. <laughs> Who'd believe that? You're the only one who knew the stage was shipping silver besides the crew and me, Vicky. Well, that don't prove... When the passenger tried to stop you from stealing, <laughs> you shot him. He isn't a passenger. He's the outlaw who waylaid the stage. You're lying, Vic. I'm not lying. He even knifed me. Hey, look. Search the breed, Tom. Sure, Sheriff. Driver, let me see the manifest. Yeah, here. And here it is, Sheriff. Well, I reckon that proves it. Knife Gomez is listed here as a passenger. What? And here's a stage ticket I found in the breed's parking. Ah, oh, you're framing me. Driver, guard. You know the breed wasn't aboard that stage. Tell him the truth. Well, if his name's on the manifest, he must have been aboard, Vic. Yeah. Ain't no sense in a man buying a ticket if he don't use it. Oh, you're lying, both of you. You saw Vic shoot the breed, didn't you, boys? Yeah. Plugged him like a lead nickel. Oh. Slickest shooting I ever saw. Well, I had to. He threw a knife at me. Looked to me like he knifed you in self-defense when he saw you were going to shoot him. <laughs> Ain't that so, boys? Well, it sure looked that way. That's right. You're framing me, Sheriff. You paid these two polecats alive for you. You're framing me for a hangnoose. That garden driver are helping you. Now, why would I want to frame my own deputy? <laughs> it don't make sense. <laughs> because I have tried to make Sage City a decent place to live. Instead of a refuge for every crooked coyote who'll pay you to leave him free to rob and murder. <laughs> That's a mighty pretty speech, Vic. Yeah, yeah. It's a pity a rope will strangle them fine words. Well, I won't be taken alive. Uh, don't try fighting. I will. Uh, Todd, I don't want to shoot him. Haul him off me. Hold on. Two hey. horsemen riding down. Uh, let's go, mate. Uh, Sheriff, those horsemen. Fight me, will you? I'll show you. Fight him, fellow. Look out. Let me fix him. You drop gun. Vic, come up with me. What? Whoa. Give me your hand. Put the saddle with me. Steady, Silver. Oh, I'm on. Come on, big fella. Get away, Todd. Shoot him. Shoot. I'll get him. Do not shoot. Oh. Come on, Silver. Leaving the driver and guard staring with amazement at the sheriff and Todd sprawled on the ground, Tonto raced after the Lone Ranger and Vic. Get him up, Scout. Later, in the Lone Ranger's camp near Sage City, Vic sat with his back against a tree while Tonto bandaged his wound. I'm sorry, Vic, that we were too late. But you weren't. You, you were just in time. I didn't think you'd resort to such a bold-faced frame-up. Knife Gomez was a notorious killer. A lot of good that does me. Stage driver and guard had swear he was a passenger and that I murdered him. And the townspeople are your friends, Vic. They'd never believe such a trumped-up charge. What the people think wouldn't count in a murder trial... Sheriff had packed the jury with his crooked friends and there'd be a noose around my neck before I could spell my name. The uh, sheriff seems to run things to suit himself. Yeah, he does. He and his thieving sidekick, Todd Lang, are mixed up in just about everything that's crooked in these parts. You could prove that. Yeah, that's a trouble I can't. Uh, they fix wound. Oh. Thanks, Injun. It's most as good as new. Vic, when you're well enough, I uh, want you to go back to Sage City. Go back? 
They hang me for sure. You don't want to spend your life being hunted? No. Uh, doesn't look like I have any choice. Vic, uh, that deputy's badge you're wearing. Huh? It's a badge of courage, Vic. Oh, uh, I never thought of it that way before. The West needs honest lawmen, courageous lawmen. But I... Return to Sage City. Finish what you've started. You mean... Clean up the outlaws and make it a safe place for decent people to live. I'll need help. You'll have help. The next day, a curious group watched the sheriff tack a reward notice on the porch outside his office. What's it say, Sheriff? There was a reward for the capture of Vic Colton. One thousand dollars. Get out of your head, Sheriff. Vic's as honest as the day is long. Yeah. Uh, what's he wanted for? Murder. Killing the passenger on the stage last night. Next thing we know, you'll tell us he tried to rob the stage, too. He did. Where's your proof, Sheriff? Stage driver and guard. They saw the whole thing. You sure you and them crooked coyotes you hang around with didn't pay him to imagine it? Yeah, you've been wanting to get rid of Vic for a long time. I saw Vic pull the job myself. What were you doing out on the trail? Well, I, I suspected Vic was up to something, so I followed him. It's more likely Vic suspected you was up to something, Sheriff. Sure. Well, Vic is guilty about the crime, Sergeant. This calls for proof. I can get it. I will get it. You don't leave nothing to chance, do you, Sheriff? What do you mean? Just what I said. There's been some mighty funny goings on lately, and Vic was close to finding him out. Am I too close? So you framed him for murder. That's a lie. We don't care what you say about Vic, Sheriff. He's the only honest lawman in this town. And just in case you do catch him, paste this in your hat. We won't stand for no hanging without airtight proof. That's right. You'll sing a different tune when you see the evidence again. him. Now get away from here. Clear away from the front of my office. Bam, moose, you hear? You too, Redskin. What are you doing here anyway? Come on, boys. Sheriff's riled. Yeah. But if there's any evidence, like he says, it's a frame of it. Yeah, I bet. You better shove on, Redskin. Uh, me go. Pack of fools. Doggone empty headed fools. You injured, get! What's the matter with you, Sheriff? <clears throat> yeah, there's no two ways about it, Todd. We can't get rid of Vic without first convincing folks around here that he ain't the honest deputy they think. They still side with him, don't they? Yeah. And when Vic hears how they're standing up for him, he'll return for a showdown. Yeah, that'll be bad. Folks are pretty riled. They might help Vic clean up the town in earnest. We've got to make him believe that he's a murderer and a thief. I know one way. What's that? Saturday night, Banker Laird will be in his office to go over the books. What of it? Vic could know about that. Go on. If Vic was to murder the banker and rob the bank... You mean frame it to look like he did? That's it. How'd we do that? We don't even know where Vic is. Yeah, we don't need Vic. There's an extra shirt and shafts belonging to him hanging in his closet. You mean... I'm about the same build as Vic. And if I was to wear his clothes and a mask in the dark... Nobody would know the difference. Hey, Savvy. Make people think you and Vic making this getaway after killing and robbing the bank, Sure. Yeah. Vic's in <laughs> hiding, so there's no chance of a slip-up. Then if Vic ever did return, we could string him up for murder and folks would approve. Yeah, that's the ticket. Yeah, but what about witnesses? Yeah, you better arrange for Hank Larkin and Luke Mayberry to be around. You know, they're the ones who were so outspoken against you in that crowd. Set it for 9 o'clock. <laughs> Saturday night about that time, Main Street will be crowded with cowhands blowing their pay cash. <laughs> There'll be plenty to see. Hey, you better take Hank and Luke with you when you chase me, too. Yeah. Only I'll give you a good start so you can make your escape. <laughs> yeah, we'll not only have Vic where we want him, we'll have plenty of bank cash besides. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you and me will represent the law here to good advantage, eh, Todd? curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Main Street on Saturday night was, as the sheriff had prophesied, crowded. Cowhands rode in from the neighboring ranches, dressed in their best and ready with cash for a good time before their new work week began. In his office at the bank, banker Laird was busy scanning the statements of the bank's books. Then one hour before the appointed time for Todd's masquerade and plan for murder, a soft footfall startled him at his desk. He glanced up quickly, adjusting his gaze to the shadows beyond the range of his light whence the sound came. Who's there? I want to talk to you, Banker Laird. Masked. I'm not an outlaw. You came to hold up the bank. I came to ask you to help me. Help you? Your life's in danger, Banker Laird. What? At nine o'clock, an outlaw is coming to murder you and rob the bank. Nine o'clock? Yes. He'll be dressed like Vic Colton. Vic Colton? Has he turned murderer? Oh, no. I don't believe it. You misunderstand. It won't be Vic. The purpose is to frame Vic for murder. Huh? Again? You seem to be on his side. I am. He was one man who fought for law and order in this town. With your help, you'll get it. Who are you? I'm a friend of Vic's. Prove it, and you're a friend of mine, too. The sheriff knows there are several men who aren't convinced that Vic is a murderer. Of course he isn't. That's why the sheriff has to frame Vic again. Is that thieving polecat behind this, too? Yes. He plans to have Vic take the blame for killing and robbing you. If I could get my hands on With him... your help, we can not only trap the sheriff, but clear Vic's name. You mean... He wants to get rid of the outlaws and make Sage City a safe place. By thunder, I've been living to see that day. And we can count on you? Right up to the hill, stranger. Now listen carefully. As the Lone Ranger reviewed with Banker Laird his plan for exposing Todd Lang's masquerade and trapping the two schemers, the sheriff, in his office just off the jail, perfected with Todd the details of their own plan. A plan for murder. As the sheriff studied Todd, now dressed in the shirt and chaps which belonged to Vic Colton, his small, beady eyes gleamed with amusement, and his lips broke into a short laugh. <laughs> you look enough like Vic and them clothes of his to be his brother, Todd. <laughs> in the dark, I'm a sense to be taken for him. Now, make sure you get the cash before you drill the bank. He, he keeps it in the safe in his office. Yeah, don't worry. I'll make sure the safe's open before I drill him. When I hear your shot, I'll come running with the witnesses. Yeah. I'll leave by the back door. That way the crowd can see me wearing Vic's clothes as a ride off. Then they see you. Uh, they want to give chase. I'll lead one after you and make it look good. I'll be sure to hide Taylor as fast as you can so there won't be a chance of him overtaking you. Yeah, I savvy. Vic will be tagged for an outlaw for life. Yeah, huh? If we never see the stubborn cuss again, so much the better. And if we do, we'll entertain it with a hanging, <laughs> with the <a> town support. <laughs> well, you better get going. It's almost 9 o'clock. Yeah, the next time you see me, I'll be loaded with cash. I'll go to the cafe and look up Hank Larkin and Luke Mayberry. I wouldn't want them to miss us. <laughs> Todd headed for the bank, disguised in Vic's clothes. He noticed a white horse and a man dressed as a miner. I hope the critter doesn't move on pretty. Don't want too many strangers around here right now. Just uh, one's a sheriff brings. As Todd came abreast, the white horse suddenly lurched and sidestepped hard against Todd, knocking him sprawling. Hey there! What the... Steady there, boy. What's the matter, big fella? Sorry. The horse became skittish. Here, let me help you up. You better break that crit. There. You all right? Uh, I guess so. Here's your gun. Oh. Oh, it must have fell out. Come on, boy. Todd watched for a moment. Then, grumbling, he continued on his way to the bank for the nine o'clock appointment. Appointment for murder. <laughs> shadows, he cautiously slipped through the unlocked door of the bank and crept stealthily through the outer offices to the private office of Banker Laird in the rear of the building. Suddenly, a clock chimed the hour, an hour that now seemed foreboding, sinister. Nine o'clock. Who is it? Don't make a move or I'll drill you. Why, you? No. No, it can't be. Vic. Vic, you... Shut up. 
What do you want? I want the cash and that safe. I, I haven't any money in it now. Saturday is the time Quit we... stalling. Now, I'll open that safe. And don't get any more notions of stalling or I'll fill you full of holes. Yeah. I'll, I'll open it. That's better. Give me the cash box. Here's all there is. You wouldn't lie to me, would you? Uh, of course not. Now you're showing sense. Stand over there against the wall. What, what are you going to do? You'll find out. Stand over there. You have the money. You're not going to shoot, are you? No. Just watch. <laughs> At the sound of the shot, an excited crowd hurried toward the bank with the sheriff, Hank Larkin, and Luke Mayberry in the vanguard. Suddenly, they saw what appeared to be the masked figure of Vic Colton ride from behind the building and head for the prairie. Hey, Vic, where the mask? You sure? Looked enough like him, Hank. Of course it's Vic. I told you that hombre wasn't as white as he was painted. Stop him. He must have robbed the bank. Sure. Probably killed the banker, too. Shoot at him, boys. He's riding out of range. Get to your horses, men. Well, they know you, Luke. He's got too much of a start, that double-dealing polecat. Suddenly, the group saw a lone horseman racing toward them. A short time before, this same tall figure had gone almost unnoticed in the drab disguise of a miner. But now, he wore a white hat and a black mask and sat astride a powerful white stallion. Hey, who's that coming? Masked man. Riding a white horse. What's oh, Silver, ho, oh, oh. ho, I'll take those guns, Sheriff. What the? They'll be safe with me. Give me back those guns. Who in places do you think you are? We've met before. Huh? You're coming with me, Sheriff. I won't do nothing like that. Whether you like it or not. But where? You'll know soon enough. There are a few things I want you to clear up. Clear up? Start walking, Sheriff. Huh? That mask on me may be an outlaw, Luke. It'll make no difference to me who he is. I like his style. Come on, let's tag along. Meanwhile, on a trail not far from town, Todd Lang, still disguised as Vic, saw an Indian astride a paint flashing across the prairie to intercept him. The powerful strides of a sturdy scout lapped the distance between Tonto and his quarry with breathtaking speed. Get him up, scout! Not hit a scout! We catch him! You rain up! Hey, we are, Richard! I'll let daylight throw you! Cast your scout! Take you to sheriff's office. Sheriff's office. Well, what for? Uh, you find out pretty soon. Back in Sage City, Tonto prodded his prisoner through the shadowy streets to the sheriff's office. Then, half pushing Todd through the doorway, he suddenly disappeared. The Colton. Yeah. How does it feel to be wearing my clothes, you scheming polecat? Well, I thought you'd frame me for keeps, huh, Todd? Uh, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> Well, don't look so scared. <laughs> I'm really thanking you for what you've done. Thanking me? Sure. You not only gave me the chance to come to town and clear myself, but put your own neck in a noose. I don't savvy. You figured to pin the bank job on me, Todd. But while you stuck up the bank, I was in the cafe, and I have plenty of friends to prove it. And you knew about my idea. Yeah. Now you're on the spot you planned for me. From where I sit, it looks plenty hot. Now, they won't believe your story. Too many people saw me disguised as you, riding away from the bank. They'll believe me when they see you masquerading in my clothes. And this six gun says they'll see you. No. No, they'll hang me. I shot Banker Laird. I framed myself for murder. Well, it's too bad. Wait. None of your tricks, Todd. You haven't forgotten I have a sensitive trigger finger. No, I... I'll make a deal with you. Name it. My freedom for half the cash in this bank box. Well, that's quite a haul you made. How about it? Sorry, Todd. Well, take all the cash. Just give me a couple hours' start. No. Nope. The sheriff. 
He won't let them hang me. He's in this too deep himself. You take your word against his. So that's it. That's why you were sitting behind the sheriff's desk when I came in. He's fixing to cross me. You ain't no good doing with a noose hanging over you, Todd. No, wait. We can work together, the three of us. There's plenty of loot for all of us. What's the sense of splitting three ways when we only have to split two? The sheriff don't need you anymore. He's got me. So the sheriff's selling me out, huh? What do you think? Well, he won't get away with it. What do you mean? That double-crossing coyote was behind every crooked deal that went on in Sage City. Can you prove it? Sure I can. I got written proof right here. Receipt signed by the sheriff for stolen goods he took from outlaws. I acted as a go-between. Thanks, Todd. That's what we wanted to hear. What? That's a lie. Todd was gunning for Vic's job as deputy. He schemed the whole thing himself. Sir, sir. We can't warm out of this, Chef. Todd's a witness to every double deal you made. Them two was in cahoots all the time. I'll take that bank cash, Todd. Gee, horse. Banker Laird. Yeah, surprised I'm alive, eh? You murdering polecat. I, I... If it hadn't been for the masked man, I might not be. The masked man? The bullets in your gun were blank. But how? I switched guns when I bumped into you tonight. You were that minor? Disguised, yes. Framed. We've been framed, Sheriff. You stupid fool. The masked man made us wait to hear you confess. Looks like the time's ripe for a new sheriff. <laughs> yeah, I've already called a meeting for tomorrow to pick one. And anyone who isn't in favor of Vic Colton for sheriff will be run out of town on a rail. That's the spirit, That's Banger. it, that's it. That's well, thanks, but it wasn't me who corralled these crooks. It was... Well, well he's gone. Gone? Who? Well, the Lone Ranger. The Lone... Is that who that masked fellow was? just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.